Hi class, now we are in chapter 3, some theory on animation. At the end of this chapter, you are expected to know roughly about a few nomenclature or terminologies involving animation and some animation techniques. Animation can be very interesting and easy if we just want to make some but it will be very very difficult if we actually want to create a tool for it because animation involves a lot of calculation the content first is the terminologies or nomenclature and then the techniques definitions Animation is a product of frame-by-frame -frame computation of graphics. We set something in our animating tool, then we let the tool do the computation of the frame-by-frame -frame outcome of the animation. It is a type of multimedia that is widely used in the internet to improve human appreciation. But however, it should be used very rarely because it actually consumes a lot of computing power. The end product of videos and animation are almost the same that we normally consider animations are videos too, but the difference that, as we said in the first point here, animations are frames that are calculated, which means when we do animation, we calculate the frames. But in videos, the frames are captured or acquired by camera mostly. So that is the key difference between video and animation. The definition of the term frame, it is a temporal or time-based drawing in an animation that is actually the same concept as the frames in the video. The frame that we use to capture images using video camera is the same frame that we use to draw frame by frame according to timeline. Frame rate also the same concept. It is number of frame per second, but in video is a number of frame per second that we capture. But in animation is number of frame we use to interpolate between one keyframe to another one. We will see what is keyframe later. If the frame rate is higher, then the animation will be smoother. But of course, it will require more computing resources. Keyframe are the frames where we put the starting frame. And from there, we will interpolate the movement until we reach the next keyframe. So the interpolation is the one that we calculate. Keyframes are the frame that we start and stop. Twins are the frames in between the keyframe. It is actually the computed frames. Based on the operation between the keyframes, either we want to rotate something, enlarge something, or make something disappear, or anything. Next, we straight go to the techniques of animation. The traditional animation is the one that is not using so much of computer processing. The first one is the full animation, the detailed drawing of frames from keyframe to keyframe. Also, the twins are drawn manually by hand. This is the way the animation giants like Walt Disney do it. Let us look at one documentary on YouTube about this process. Actually, the pre-feature cartoon camera was fairly simple in construction and operation and generally very satisfactory. Here, a Mickey Mouse short is being put on film. Mickey has been inked and painted on transparent sheets of celluloid. 
This happens to be a panorama effect where the character will walk in one place and the background keeps moving behind him to create the illusion. Each time a new cell of Mickey is photographed, so you can the see that must be the frame fraction of an inch. partially snap one by one. The difference between frame to frame is actually of the movement of the background and makes a the frame of slightly different film. drawing of Mickey. And here's how the action looks on the screen. That is full animation. The opposite is the limited animation. Limited means the drawing is not done completely. Some movement is looks like so stiff and in straight line. This technique is mostly used in Japanese anime. You can see here the movement is a little stiff and not smooth. Rotoscoping is still about the traditional drawing of animation. But now the drawing is done by the animator based on a picture projected by a projector based on a real life action. The real life action is a real human and then the animator will draw it to become cartoon he wants to animate. Even some live action that is mixed with animation. For example, in the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the animation is still done frame by frame. That is traditional animation. Other than that, we also do what we call stop motion. The animation is done by snapping the stop movement of object frame by frame to create the illusion of motion. For example, in this animated GIF, what the animator did was fix a camera to one place and then he put the coin somewhere at the beginning, snap it, and then move a little bit, snap again. Then when we process the snaps of the images to make a movie, so we get an illusion of moving coin. Example of real movie or sitcoms that were made by stop motion animation. First one is the robot chicken. This one, the animation is done on puppet or dolls. You can see that the puppet is actually snapped little bit by little bit after a small movement of the required motion. Next is Chicken Run. This is also stop motion animation, but it is not puppet, but it is clear object. The motion is also done by snapping the clay after a slight movement of the clay character. So perhaps puppet and clay is too advanced. Another kind of stop motion animation is using cut out animation, which is actually paper or close cutting. One example is in the sitcom South Park. You can see here the clapping hands are actually papers that were cut using scissor and then move little bit by little bit to make an illusion of movement in the animation. So that is the traditional animation. We can also have computer animation because computing the frame by frame between key frame to another one is best to be done by computer. It is the digitized or computerized approach to animation. It can be 2D. If it is based on 2D images, examples are the animated GIF, Flash, even PowerPoint animation. Or it can be the advanced 3D animation. 3D animation 
will be based on 3D mesh like this. This is a very rough of definition of the object little girl here. If we add more points, we will see the object clearer. And if we add more and more point, the mesh will represent a better looking little girl. This mesh will be given bones or skeleton so that the animator can move it. The animator can use the computer to move it in 3D or in the modern Hollywood way of making this, they normally use motion capture, which is in this slide. Motion capture is the latest, most advanced technique to create 3D animation. It uses live actors whose movement will be captured and used to move digital characters in animation. This normally using marker. There are two markers. Next slide we will show. This marker is the marker that emits light. So the camera, this one, this one and many more camera around the actor. This marker will show the position of the important joints of the actor and then to be mapped to the animated characters in the movie. So this one is the one that's emitting light, could be LED. There are two types. The first type is the type of marker that reflect light and that marker will be triangulated by a few camera from different angle to get the 3D position of it. So for example, this is a marker. This marker is reflecting IR, infrared light, and the changes of the position of the marker will be translated into the movement of the character. The second type of marker is the one in the previous slide, which is the one that produces light. And similarly, will be triangulated by a few cameras to get to get the position.